Today we have Mazikeen and we're going to be going over forward momentum and guide work or pull momentum, whatever you want to call it. Uh, guide work and forward momentum are somewhat similar to teach. Um, neither of them can be taught until like two years old when the dog is fully grown. Um, you can start teaching them the commands younger, but you can't actually use it until they're two years old when their uh, growth plates have fully closed. Otherwise, you're risking the dog's health. So that's a big warning I need to put out there. Do not start actually using it where you're actually going to be putting any sort of weight or doing true guide work until they're two years old. You can start teaching it younger. So I have her, just her leash on just to show you guys I'm not actually putting any weight whatsoever on her right now. Okay, so to start for forward momentum, the first thing you want to do is teach them mark or place. So you're going to take one specific spot and you're going to teach them go in that spot. That means a good thing. So let's say I have like a little spot right there. That's a little white circle right there. I would say, Mask, can come here? Mark, yes, go girl. I'm just saying mark right now, but it can be place, mark, whatever. And you're just going to have them stand there. That's what you're going to start with. And that's sometimes the basic to a lot of things. Um, but you are going to start with that and then you're just going to keep saying mark and then you're going to eventually get to a point where the dog will just go to the mark without you having to direct them there. Um, once you get to that point, you want to start making sure they're going to stay at the mark until you kind of, even if you're kind of moving away. And then from there, I'm not showing all this because it's, it's very long and this video is going to be super long if I show every single step, but basically teach mark. Uh, wait until they know it by command and then start teaching it them to stay there no matter what um, and then you're gonna start uh, you would introduce the harness then want a mobility harness for this um, so you do need one of those that's gonna be the safest way for your dog those are specifically made for you to put weight on it so one it's made for you to be able to pull on it without anything coming undone and two it's made to properly fit the dog and uh, be comfortable for the dog even though you're kind of pu uh, pulling back on them. So once they learn that mark and once you've gotten them used to the harness, you're gonna start walking them to mark and say, Mark. So come here. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so I'm just gonna say, Mark. Yes, good girl. Good girl. You're gonna start doing that at a heel and then eventually the dog should, um, should be able to just go forward without you when you say mark it may take a lot of encouragement to get them to break the heel that you've taught them so you just say mark now she knows that if I'm pointing forward she needs to walk ahead of me um, but at first what you're gonna say is just you're, you're just gonna say mark and then they should start walking there because they know what you're asking but you're also gonna be pulling back a little bit on them so for the handle you're gonna be pulling back here because what forward momentum is is it's helping you're using the dog's momentum to push you forward. So that's basically what you're gonna be using. Um, so you just say, mark, and then just start pulling a little bit back and then walk for, walk with them and use a lot of encouragement and then start having them go ahead of you. Use a lot of encouragement for this. This is not easy thing for them to learn. It's really, really hard for them to learn typically. Um, so you really wanna watch that and make sure that you're doing it properly you watch a few different di videos on YouTube of a dog doing forward momentum, so you make sure that you're doing it properly, because if you don't, you could hurt the dog. Uh, but basically what you're gonna be doing is pulling back so that the dog can push your body forward. Um, just make sure you're using a lot of praise when you're teaching that. So basically, forward, forward. You're go you are gonna start uh, using the forward command. I don't think I mentioned that, but once, once they start going to the mark, once you say mark, You'll start switching it from mark to forward or place to forward, whatever. Um, just so they understand that you're asking forward, which means they need to move forward. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have to say mark and they're going to be looking for a mark on the ground. And they don't know what you're asking. So make sure you do introduce the forward command. Um, that's about it for forward, I think. All right, so now we'll go over guide. So these are in a way similar, mainly because the dog still has to step forward for you. If you are someone who is just disassociating and you need the dog to guide you, one, don't, I wouldn't recommend taking them into a parking lot unless you know how to teach them intelligent disobedience. 
because if they guide you out of a grocery store, they're going into a parking lot, and if the dog doesn't know how to work with that, they could just walk you straight into a car because you're telling them to go. So make sure that you're not having them get you out. You're gonna have them guide you to a safe or quiet place and then have them start um, keeping people away from you until the episode is over, even though that seems embarrassing and you may just wanna go to your car and sit in there. I don't recommend having your dog guide you out to a parking lot and treat your car unless your car is right in front of the building where there's no chance of them crossing a road or a parking lot that could have a car coming because the command that you're using is not how you teach them to be, uh, to do intelligent disobedience we're just teaching them to guide when teaching guide work you are at some point going to have to teach them to go around obstacles if you truly need uh, truly need guide work the dog has to be able to guide you around the obstacles so you don't hurt yourself you don't trip um, blah, blah blah you know all that stuff so the first step of guide work you could actually use the forward momentum tactic but instead of pulling back you're going to Put, uh, put your arm forward for them to guide um, and use the guide command. You're going to use the same tactic that I would use for forward momentum because it is going to help you out a lot. Um, I also taught her a forward command which also can work especially if you start this from a young age just teaching them to walk ahead of you. Pair them with a treat. Masky. Hey. And basically you're just learning them to go ahead of you. Um, that's why I started teaching her to move ahead of me. I did not teach her forward momentum like this because it's a little more, she has to take on weight. Teaching them those keywords is gonna help. So te teaching them a keyword for going faster or going slower does help. They do also use this in guide dogs because sometimes the guide dogs are slacking a little bit, especially when they're first starting training. So they, they will sometimes use different commands to get them to go at different paces. Um, that's what I do with her, so she knows how fast or how slow I need her to go. Um, you can also use the mark technique in the forward momentum part portion of the video. So teaching them, go here, go here, and then you're just gonna start adding a command to that. So just use that technique too, that could also work. And then once it comes to the obstacles, basically what you would teach them is you would have them this is after you've taught them to get ahead of you, this is after they've already gotten that down, you would go just stand here and have them figure it out and keep telling them to go forward so that they know what you're asking, but they have to figure out how do I get around this and get you around it safely. So like for here, if I had if I had Mazikeen, she'd have to go even more ahead of me. And that's another thing that they do have to learn is in tight spaces, they have to learn to either go ahead of you or go behind you, that's your choice. Whichever one you prefer them to do, but in guide work they have to go in front of you because they have to guide you through. A slim spot like this, I would ask her to go forward and I would stand back and just uh, let the leash go and then walk through behind her and then reward right there. That's what I would do. But if the space is bigger, you're going to have them uh, at a normal guiding length, whatever, you're, whatever you like. So you're going to have them at a normal one and you're just going to see it's they keep going forward. Some dogs will get freaked out by this because you're telling them to go forward, but it seems like something's kind of in the way. Um, so at first you are going to come up to the side so it's a little bit easier for them. And then you can start going up to bigger objects like we could come over here and walk her straight into the middle and say forward. So now she has to find a way around this. Um, sometimes you may have to end up guiding them around and say uh, go around. One thing that you do want to teach them is stop right before an obstacle so you know there's an obstacle there. That way you could kind of feel around if you really need to um, so that you kind of know what you're looking at. Then you would just say, so they stop before an obstacle and then you would say, go around. So you may have to teach them how to go around. Some dogs will just figure it out on their own. It depends on the dog, but you may have to teach them, okay, I need you to go around and then walk them around. That may not always be the case, but for some dogs, you may have to do that. Um, keep in mind, this is not an easy thing to do. Both of these are very, very long and drawn out process. Process is, I definitely recommend using the mark technique. It usually works out a lot better. It's a lot easier. And then having those vocal cues for faster or slower does help out too. But I would, honestly, I would recommend using both. So train it for the most part with the mark technique. Um, and then you can start adding in 
slower or faster. So for her, faster is go, slower is a little bit of pressure or I'll touch her side and she knows that that means she's going too fast. I don't hit her and I don't like poke into her. I just do a little touch on her side and she's like, oh, I'm going too fast. Basically, um, the basics of forward momentum or pull momentum is gonna be the same as the basics of guide work, but the actual tasks are different. In guide work, the dog has to learn a lot more about how to get around things and how to use that intelligent disobedience. You would have to end up teaching that. Intelligent disobedience is basically, even though you're saying to go forward, the dog has to decide if it's actually safe for you to go forward, and if it's not, they will just stand there. For pull momentum, you're using the dog's forward momentum to push yourself forward. So the tasks are different, but the basics of teaching it both can be the same. With guide work, you have to teach them how to go around obstacles, and they do have to learn um, that intelligent disobedience if you ever plan to have, try to get them to go outside for you, or if you're someone who is outside a lot, maybe going to different stores a lot. Um, that have like the outside malls, things like that, you would need to teach that because they could walk in front of a car that's still coming and that car may not have time to stop because they were never taught how to be disobedient, especially if a super confident dog. Now as a kid, I wouldn't worry about that with. Um, I would still work on intelligent disobedience to be 100% sure, but she's a little bit behind on the confidence scale. I would like her to be a little bit higher up, but that also means she's gonna keep herself safe from a car and if she sees a car, she's not gonna walk in front of it um, right now. So far, she hasn't tried to do that. Um, so working on that intelligent disobedience, going around objects, there's a lot of different components to each of these, but just get the basics down first. And remember, do not start this. Do not actually do true guiding or true pull momentum, where you're actually putting any sort of weight, pressure, or pull against the dog, because you could hurt them. And um, at two years old, their growth plates are fully closed, so there should be no more growing to be done, and they should be pretty intact. Also, make sure that you get them checked out by a vet to be clear of all joint issues, because a dog that has any sort of joint issue, even if it's not active right now, if she had hip dysplasia and was diagnosed with hip dysplasia at two years old, even if I see no symptoms of it, even if her hips aren't locking yet, it's still too risky. I'm gonna be pull momentum and guide work it's both a lot on the joints if the dog has joint issues if they don't it usually will be fine because the dog can handle it but if the dog has joint issues you can't work that dog for these things because you're putting weight on them and you're pulling against them which is forcing their um, joints to work a little harder I think that's everything so I'm gonna go ahead and close it up here any questions comments concerns leave it in the comment section I feel like I missed something because I was talking so fast and I probably did. So if this is confusing to any of you, go ahead and send me a message. I might end up redoing these videos into two separate videos um, later on after I get all the basics of each training video coming up down. Um, let me know if you would like be interested in that, if you would be interested in seeing more in-depth videos of each thing that I've done or just certain things. Um, other than that, I think that's everything. We love you.